Blizzard just opened up the Season 4 PTR for testing earlier today, and there is a lot to talk about. Hi, it's Lerald, and I'm going to cover what's happening in Season 4, but before I do, be sure to like and subscribe. Alright, let's just start by taking a look at the blue posts that they made, and here we are. Improved dungeon progression and new rotations. We talked about this in a previous video, but we have this handy graphic here to kind of indicate what their new plans are for difficulty levels in dungeons. They really want Mythic Plus to sort of exist more on the continuum, if we were to compare it to Raid, in the continuum of like heroic to mythic raiding and beyond, that's fine. And then they're sort of shrinking the difficulty numbers down so that a 10 is the like highest level of reward. And then that allows them to have more progression from normal to heroic and have mythic zeros be like a meaningful distinction as opposed to all of normal heroic and mythic zero being just an insta clear stomp as soon as you have players with any sort of level of gear at all. I think this is good. You know, it gives more opportunity for more people to play the game the way they want to and enjoy playing WoW, and that is objectively a good thing. They are maybe somewhat unfortunately bringing back all of the eight Dragonflight dungeons. Now I'll talk about this uh, just a little bit more in a second. They are retuning all of them pretty substantially. I think they might actually be good in the end. I am a little apprehensive, of course, about doing Dragonflight dungeons again. I really didn't love them. Like I liked season one and season two of Mythic Plus. Just find this this expansion. I think my least favorite dungeons in those two seasons were, for the most part, the Dragonflight dungeons. Uh, other than Vortex Pinnacle. I didn't really love Vortex Pinnacle. Who did? But, you know, I'm willing to give them all another shot, obviously, when they when they come around. So, yeah. In addition to kind of restructuring the way that dungeons will work, which I really think is more of an experiment that they're kind of trying to figure out for future expansions, they're also adding a whole new gear progression, and it's really just going to be the same exact upgrade system that we have now, except that everything will, just like in the transition between Season 2 and Season 3, everything will be pushed up by 39 item levels. So I have logged onto the PTR to kind of look at some gear here, and like 490 item level is the max you can have, 489 is the max you can have on the Myth Track. And just to compare here... If we compare the like myth track in the new the new uh, max item level here, it goes up to uh, starts at 519 and it goes all the way up to 528. So exactly a 39 item level difference. It's still the same four upgrade system for myth track gear. It's still the same six upgrades track for for hero gear and still the same eight upgrades for champion gear so they seem like you know unless they change something after after this initial unveiling of season four they make some changes to the upgrade system and all it seems like they kind of like this and they're probably going to be sticking with this going forward and to be honest i think it's been pretty successful so i actually wouldn't have a problem with this basic idea sticking around long term the only real thing that i would want to change is uh, making it a lot easier to upgrade gear on my alts because I have hundreds and hundreds of upgrade crests on my paladin and all my monk and all my death knight and it would be nice to be able to like in some way enable gearing up some other characters a little faster or even just like for crafted gear to be a little bit less of a chore either less expensive or uh competitive in terms of item level available at the maximum item level of course they're throwing in all the normal stuff they're throwing in a mount it's just kind of one of those weird fox snake things we can take a look at it here yep it's it's weird looking, but I like it and really good color palette on it. Actually, uh, an infinite armor dawn, which we can just look at that in game. It's this bad boy here again. Really good color palette. I like it a lot. I think that looks really cool. And so, you know, pretty much all the stuff you would expect in a new season of Mythic Plus and, and raiding. And then just like in Shadowlands, by completing each of the raids on on the faded difficulty you'll get a teleport to it and like okay that's kind of useful it is account wide so being able to teleport to the entrance of Abarus or the entrance of the vault and vidcarnates on your like level one alts is probably not very useful but it is kind of funny i've done that on uh at least been able to use those on other characters in the shadowlands season four so like it's kind of nice to be able to like teleport from zone to zone Although, you know, with this being a, a sort of a better designed continent in this expansion, it's maybe less useful than being able to teleport from zone to zone in 
in Shadowlands. Now, players were able to vote on the tier pieces that they're able to get per spec, and the tier bonuses can kind of fluctuate from spec to spec. The appearances are not necessarily uh, tied to the the tier set bonuses either, and I think that's kind of cool. They also have uh, explained how we're going to have the upgrade system for legendaries. You'll be able to come to these three vendors here. You're going to be able to use this new currency called Antique Bronze Bullion. It is a little different from the dinars in Season 4 of Shadowlands, which there was a cap on those of three. You would get three of them total. You would use them by whatever three pieces you wanted from the vendors, and then they would despawn forever. They haven't said what the cap on these is or how many of them you can get or how you get them. It's totally a, like a black box at this point, but notably it costs two of them to buy anything and you can buy pretty much anything of value from the three raids with these bronze bullion, including upgrade tokens for the legendaries. And that, that includes both the legendary axe from Farak, but also the uh, the evoker legendary, which I don't, I don't have to show off. So you can buy all of the trinkets from Raid, you can buy basically all of the weapons from Raid, and that even includes the like the cool Farak ones. Not the legendary or the, you know, from either of the bosses that drop legendaries, but you can buy like you can buy Golak, you can buy uh you can buy Farak's Tainted Rage Heart, you can buy Beacon of the Beyond, Voice of the Silent Star. There are a couple of things that don't fall into the trinket and weapon category that you're still able to buy trying to find all of those to kind of show them off. I don't think that there were any that really stood out and were super interesting from a Myrdra cell that would fit into that camp, but you can buy Seal of Diurnus Chosen from Vault of the Incarnates, which is pretty nasty. There's been some retuning on some of the trinkets, like Codger Chili Globe has been uh, turned down. A couple of these different things have been reworked or retuned. We'll kind of take a look at that once we get a little closer to Season 4 in case things change. There's been also some redesigning, retuning of a lot of the very, very bad dungeon tank trinkets, and that, that actually is good to see those go from being, like, <laughs> tragically bad to actually pretty decent. It would be nice if they could maybe get that <laughs> going in the, like, first uh, patch of an expansion, but, you know, I'll take it at least now. So when we were able to buy these items in Shadowlands Season 4, and I assume that it'll work like this going forward, but nobody has the currency to buy these items yet and be able to test. When we were able to buy them before, you would buy them at, like, normal raid level, which it looks like you'll be able to buy them at, at like, LFR level. Um, and you'll be able to use like some sort of upgrade token that you get from a quest, like a quest line that you do in raid that basically is about as complicated as kill some bosses. You'll kill some bosses, you'll get a currency, you'll be able to upgrade the pieces that you've bought from the vendor to the appropriate item level. Like, you know, if you're doing the quest in heroic, you'll be able to get heroic upgrade tokens, mythic, mythic upgrade tokens. Yeah, all pretty intuitive stuff and... I think it's a really good system. I think the only real complaint I have about the way that they're doing this is I don't think that this is something that should wait until season four. I do think this is something that should be in in every season. Now, maybe just for the sake of competitive balance in the race and blah, blah, blah. Maybe they wait until like the 0.5 patch to allow players to deterministically acquire items. But, you know, this is World of Warcraft, right? On the one hand, oh boy, you know, you didn't get the piece of gear right, that's real sad, that's a pretty, like, common shared experience, but on the other hand, it's 2024 and we're we're playing World of Warcraft, like, I think once you've farmed a raid for, like, 15 weeks straight, I think you should be able to say, all right, enough of the bad RNG, I, uh, I, I get the item now, period. Okay, so now I want to take a look at the actual development notes here because they are, I think, the most interesting thing. And there's really not a ton of stuff to go over here other than dungeons. Like, I'm just scrolling down to the bottom to look. Okay, here's everything that's not about dungeons. Like, you know, class tuning. All right, we're done with that. Now let's take a look at the retuning of the Season 4 Mythic Plus dungeons. They're bringing back all of the Dragonflight original dungeons, which was kind of the nightmare scenario for me. I really wasn't thrilled about that at all but they are massively retuning, basically just like gutting a lot of the mechanics and damage from all of the different dungeons. And I'm just gonna give you kind of some highlights. Okay, first off, they start with a really good one here. They've added a checkpoint in Halls of Infusion after the big frog boss. Thank goodness that needed to happen. They've also normalized the spawn rate of the tsunamis during the gauntlet, don't know what that means. They've removed Wind Buffet and Thunderstorm from the boss that you fight there. 
that is good. They have added this mechanic right here. Primal Tsunami, the final boss of Halls of Infusion that would on a timer cause you to be thrown away and you'd have to walk back and fight it again. That now occurs at 50% health. It was 100% energy. We'll even look at that mechanic here just to kind of show it off in the uh, in the dungeon journal. Halls of Infusion, Primal Tsunami, cast away. This bad boy right here, entrap each player in a bubble of water and send them to the four corners of the earth. Now you are always going to get a cast away, which is fine, right? On higher levels, you always were anyway, but you could get it repeatedly. And it was just a really, really awful dungeon because of the uh, the possibility of like having to do the cast away, the, the gauntlet of running back multiple times. That will never happen again now. Excellent. There's also a lot of things like this one right here. Watcher Iridius getting a visual during his frontal cone on the tank. Uh, a lot of stuff throughout these notes where they basically just had a mechanic that didn't have any sort of visual at all. It just had a cast bar and you just had to know to dodge. And now there's some sort of indicator. Azure Vault's had its timer increased by a minute. That's good. Here we go. Crystal Fury's frontal piercing shard now has a precast visual. Again, great. Draconid Breakers have been kind of redesigned. They cast their horrible shoulder slam less frequently. I believe they're not able to be line of sighted. I think that's an older patch note that I saw from a while ago that they are no longer able to be line of sighted. So normally the way people would do these guys is they would pull them all together, get them at like a corner, like near a door frame, and then people would line of sight to not ever get the shoulder slam on them. And that is not like possible anymore, but then they've been tuned to not be just completely overpowered to compensate for that. All right, there is another one here, Umbral Skull in uh, in the Azure Vault has had oppressive miasma removed in Mythic Difficulty. Now that is this mechanic, which causes you to be slowed anytime you try to move during that fight. Now it says Mythic Difficulty, which to me would indicate Mythic only, like Mythic Zero only. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through the whole dungeon journal. It's not there on Mythic, but if I scroll through on Mythic Plus, it's not there either. So it may have been removed from both Mythic and Mythic Plus. If that is the case, Oh man, that's great. That is such a, such an improvement to a horrible boss. The slow was just like, that fight is pretty brutal and adding the constant slow anytime you try to move uh, really just made it so much more painful. So if that is the case, if that's intended, that is a significant improvement to a, a not that great boss. All right, Brackenhide Hollow had quite a few changes. The Rotpo Stalkers, the archers that would just shoot people to death over and over again, have been like reworked. They made it so that they can't just recast shoot. I think this is something they probably need to do with basically all archer mobs. Like the fact that archer mobs will just stand like looking at the tank and not attacking the tank, instead just just machine gunning down the the party is terrible design. It sucks. It, I mean, it feels bad to play. Everybody hates it. No one likes that at all. So this is a design change that everybody, I think, can agree is good. And hopefully that'll be like the the de facto way to make archers going forward. It kind of indicates to me that like maybe going left side in Brackenhide Hollow is actually an option now. I don't know. We'll see. A really good change here is that Stink Breath has been made much less horrible. I still think, you know, he's not like great. I would love to not do stink breath, but if you're if he locks his facing after targeting a player, that means you can sidestep the stink breath and it has a visual while casting so you can see where the cone is. So this is really good. This is improvement for like visu visibility, just making it easier to see what's happening in dungeons, which is really good. There are a lot of things that have just been straight up removed. Decay speakers, rot chanting totems, the claw fighters, bloody bite. Uh, great. Good stuff. And then they've made the Hack Claw Warband the first fight in there, which has definitely bricked a ton of keys for people. They've made that fight a lot, lot less difficult than it was. So reduce the damage on some of the main mechanics in there, just generally made it a lot less awful. In Algathar Academy, they've made Croft do a lot less damage with the Firestorm. They have also made the Tank Buster, the Savage Pack, be less less dangerous that's I, that is like one of the mechanics that i remember most from the early seasons of mythic plus in this expansion just absolutely obliterating my tanks so having that get get cut down is really really appreciated definitely very good uh a really big change here a really big change here is in neltheris the burning chains are no longer just like a tool that you can get your whole party to use and completely delete all the trash in the dungeon they are now a one use 
per person, or Ivy, I should say one use total. So one person can use each burning chain and it's now a stun and a 50% damage increase for the next five seconds. So not totally useless, but pretty close to useless compared to how insanely overpowered they were in the past. I think this is good. I think that any sort of environmental mechanic that allows you to take just most of the trash out of a dungeon is really, really bad. I hated Necrotic Wake for this exact reason. And I'm actually happy to see this change. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset if they had just removed burning chains entirely and then retuned the dungeon to compensate. But, you know, this is this is a pretty good compromise. They've also made Chargath uh, work quite a bit differently. He no longer has a sort of AOE circle around him while he's doing the fiery focus thing. He focuses damage on his current target, which is supposed to be the tank. And also, like, if somebody dies, the grounding chain that you use to break that mechanic won't just despawn, and then you'll, like, be locked in it permanently, and that's the end of the fight now. You will still have that chain available to, to break the boss with. They've also reworked the final boss, uh, the sort of main mechanic of that fight, the Curse of the Dragon Horde. Each time you pick up one of the items to help break the shield from the boss, you get a stacking curse. It only lasts for 30 seconds, as opposed to five minutes which was basically permanent from before but then it wouldn't stack so i think this is a lot better design ultimately it's still useful to dispel it can potentially be more dangerous but it's also like generally speaking not as dangerous i think that's a lot better design not good offensive is still not good and still offensive but it has been made better the longbows in that first section around uh whatever the boss whatever the dragon boss that you go to first granith yes all of the longbow dudes around him have been um tuned down substantially their multi-shot is just completely gone they cast rain of arrows less often it's a lot easier to kill them which then means that they'll be less dangerous just you know really good changes to the trash removing a lot of mechanics from trash especially like archers throughout this expansion is really the way to make this fourth season like go out positively make people feel positively about the dungeons it has the potential to like make people go oh yeah actually i like dragonflight dungeons the whole time with no no they didn't in season one and two no they absolutely didn't but this is the this is the way to keep a, a good taste in people's mouth as we transition into a new expansion is really kind of under under tune a lot of the trash that was significantly overtuned nerf it down to a reasonable level, give people a good, positive uh, feeling on the way out of the expansion. Now, there were two things that really stood out to me in all of this, and that was the change to Kairaka in Ruby Life Pools. The debuff from Kairaka lasts a little longer, does a little less damage to compensate, but yeah, I don't know. That's not like really a great nerf to Kairaka. Having that uh, debuff duration lasts a little longer means that it's less likely to spread more fire because of the way it works it's sort of a complex mechanic even though it's somewhat simple at least ostensibly simple I could see this line kind of being a nerf and a buff at the same time this is definitely a nerf the fact that there were no nerfs to either of the first two bosses is a little surprising I feel like that second boss really hits tanks pretty hard so I'm surprised that they're just bringing that back like it is and they're also not nerfing any trash which is like shocking and then finally ultimon legacy of tear they are nerfing the fiery surge damage from the lost wars by 50 percent and then apparently the rest of that dungeon that everybody thought was like overtuned and painful apparently it was perfect and nothing needs to be changed so that's surprising but you know whatever i think they're probably due for more changes to some of these uh dungeons down here at the bottom of the pool but I do think the top of the list here, Halls of Infusion is one of the hardest dungeons they've ever had, and they've really fixed a lot of the problems with that. I think it's their fault. It was actually a dungeon I liked, but needed some changes, and it has gotten those. And Brackenhide Hollow is a dungeon I do not care for and has gotten some changes, so that's that's pretty good. I am hopeful that they'll do more for Ruby and Ultiman and probably not good offensive as well, but pretty good start, I would say. All right, so with all of that being said, when is season four coming? How long will it last? Those are kind of the two remaining questions. Realistically, I think we're about four to five weeks away from season four landing. It's almost certainly gonna line up with the end of the Plunderstorm event, and the only clear indication that Blizzard has given on how long that will last is that they said several weeks when they first unveiled it. Several is three to five, at least in my mind, but I think this is probably more in the five to six range. So since it's already been out for a week, that puts us in the range of four to five weeks remaining. 
Now, as for how long it will last, Shadowlands is the only frame of reference we have from the past, and I don't really think it's a perfect basis for comparison. I do have my spreadsheet, uh -huh, of course, but you know, this isn't like gospel or anything. So Shadowlands season four, this right here, lasted for 11 weeks. Then another five weeks of pre-patch, the Dragonflight pre-patch. So if that were exactly the case here, if that were perfectly mirrored, we would be getting the 11.0 pre-patch in early to mid-July, I think. And that would put us getting to War Within releasing in the middle of August. That does sound pretty plausible to me, especially if we look at the 2024 roadmap and kind of see the, the locations of everything. I think, you know, maybe the real timeline will take a little longer, but my guess is July to August for the pre-patch and August to September for the actual expansion release. I think those are pretty reasonable dates. This is also something I totally forgot to put in my notes, but that also means that the War Within Alpha is probably happening within the next two weeks. So with all of that being said, Season 4 is coming soon, and the War Within is closing in pretty rapidly. I think there's going to be a lot more new stuff to play and think and talk about really soon, and I'm very excited about it. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.